All right, so I'm going to talk about student growth through writing, uh, what I did in my class. A bit of the basics, talk seventh grade United States history uh, from 1865 to the present. Uh, I covered the Cold War and the civil rights units while I was there. I decided to use the raft format, where I give students their role, audience, format, and topic. That way I could kind of play with writing, uh, have some variation in there, have some different kind of prompts. My personal philosophy on writing uh, I think it's a great way for students to show their critical thinking skills, a uh, great way for them to express themselves uh, in assessment, other than multiple choice tests, which they're kind of used to in our class. I've got high expectations for writing. I think every student can do it, regardless of what their uh, performance is on multiple choice tests in the classroom. I think everyone can write. It just takes some time with everyone. Uh, and you need a dynamic and a consistent approach. You can't just have the same prompt for every unit. Students are going to get bored with it, uh, but you have to be consistent. You can't just give a writing assignment every nine weeks, expect to see growth, expect for them to improve and embrace writing. So my style of prompts are kind of interpretive, letting them tell the story, summarize, uh, but I also let them put some student opinion in there, make it personal. I did a perspective on the Vietnam War, uh, an obituary of the overall Cold War, and the opinion piece on the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, a little bit about the students I chose, uh, all from my first period. Uh, student A, as I will affectionately call her from here on out, uh, was a female with a low B average in the class. Uh, she just passed the SOL last year with a 400. Uh, and if I could classify her in one way, she's pretty chatty. Student B is also a female with a middle B average in the class, but she failed her SOL in sixth grade uh, with a score of 344, uh, definitely on the lower end compared to some others. And in class, she's pretty tired. Uh, I mean, you start at 7.35, I'm tired as well. Uh, and she's pretty quiet during class. So just a bit about them. Prompt 1 covers uh, US 2.8C, which is Cold War events. Uh, did the raft. Their role was, you're either going to be a hawk or a dove. I'm not talking about the birds. Uh, if they support the war, or if they're against the war. Audience was a newspaper editor, format being a letter, uh, they were writing to describe if they agreed with the Vietnam War or not. And I always associated an image with the picture to kind of let them see what it was like at the time. I kind of just let them tell a story with what was going on. And this prompt I gave very little structure to what was going on to help me assess their learning. Student A, prompt one, uh, if you can see, she said she's a protester and she disagrees with it because they're killing a lot of people, but she never exactly specifies what war she's talking about, anything to really do with the war. Uh, so I said, next assignment, add more detail. You did well by sticking with one side, but I'd like to see more detail in the future. Student B uh, also has no detail about the Vietnam War itself. Uh, and instead of just sticking with one side, she kind of takes the fence. She says, I'm against the war but I'll support the uh, soldiers and uh, do anything for them. Kind of using prior knowledge from World War II when we were rationing and uh, people at home were really supporting the war. So overall, student A, she took a side, but it lacked detail. There was no info about the war itself. Student B kind of took the fence, uh, lacked detail, but she used prior knowledge of World War II, which I found pretty interesting. So prompt two needed to make some improvements. I decided to do a Cold War obituary to summarize the entire Cold War that we've been talking about. So they were going to report to normal citizens in 1991 uh, what the Cold War was all about. Uh, I included a pre-write to help them structure their ideas and make sure they had actual details about the Cold War instead of just writing, shooting from the hip. Uh, and I added a rubric so they could see what they needed. The rubric uh, is here. Uh, 50 points was just from the pre-write, filling out the raft, the date of the Cold War, four significant details, three significant events. 25 points if you include everything from that pre-write in your actual writing. 25 points, if I was an outside observer that had no idea what the Cold War was, do I get a good sense of what it was all about? So student A, here's her pre-write, her details if you can't see, uh, U.S. and Soviet Union, it's not a real war, there's the Marshall Plan, Warsaw Pact, and she writes, uh, pretty well. Uh, she summarizes it, but there's no real structure. She copies her quick notes word for word into sentence form. It kind of just has seven sentences, 
uh, and their quick notes. So it's good summarizing, but the writing not quite there yet. Student B also has her pre-write with her major details and events, but her writing is more of a bulleted list uh, instead of a paragraph. She includes all of her details and she has some uh, good uh, summary skills, but the writing again, not actually there. It's more of a bulleted list, seven separate sentences, nothing really coming together. So A, much more detailed and include the basic necessities, but she copied the quick notes and it kind of jumps from idea to idea. B, kind of similar. Good detail, but jumps uh, from idea to idea. Uh, copies the quick notes. Something that I really uh, focused on the next time. Uh, US uh, 9A, the Civil Rights Movement. This was after their test. Uh, the audience was me, and they were just writing a letter answering the question, which civil rights event had the biggest impact on gaining equal status? I gave them a rubric and a pre-write again, and I specifically said, do not copy your notes, come up with something in your own words, and then support it. Rubric, uh, pre-write completed, does not copy the quick notes, an easy 20 points, just by putting it in your own words. Uh, takes one side and sticks with it, and then supports your uh, opinion with evidence. So student A, pre-write, she chose the Montgomery Bus boycott. She puts the quick notes in her own words, and then describes why it had such an impact. And so in her writing, I was very pleased she was able to transfer this into a pretty good paragraph. Uh, she was saying that uh, she described it in her own words, and then that it had the biggest impact because it desegregated buses in Alabama. Uh, and so, honestly, uh, social studies wise, I was pleased with it. The only room for improvement I saw was kind of grammar and paragraph structure. Student B, she chose the Birmingham race riots. Uh, she does not copy her quick notes, but in describing the significance, she starts talking about the Montgomery bus boycott. In her writing, the first half does a pretty good job explaining why the uh, riots in Birmingham had an impact because they were televised. But at the bottom, then she says, African Americans also walked for 381 days, boycotting the buses, which occurred eight years before the Birmingham riots. Uh, and so she didn't really stick with one event. So student A, good detail. She supports her opinion with evidence. She sticks with one side. For the future, really it's kind of about grammar and sentence structure, which I've realized I need to kind of uh, focus a bit on so I can help improve their writing. Student B had good detail. Her uh, structure was better. It wasn't like a bulleted list. She actually had a paragraph, but she doesn't pick one event. She does not have like her argument because she kind of goes back and forth. So for the future, both uh, I think I would incorporate pre-writes to help them kind of just structure their uh, writing, get their details out there before they write, uh, because I saw great improvement from A to B. Student A, like I said, Work a bit on grammar, sentence structure, and uh, paragraph structure. Where student B, I think I would need to model the idea of uh, arguments, opinions, and how you support evidence. Now it strengthens your argument if you only stick with one and then give your details. Uh, my overall observations is that I had F and D students put A work and write. Uh, I only had one student who had an F throughout the year. She got an 88 and a 91 on her writing. Uh, and it just goes to show that she was able to express herself differently. Uh, I don't know if it's because she had her notes there to help her. I definitely could have done that, but writing uh, helped her. Students moaned and groaned and wrote on the evaluation, I hate writing, don't ever do it again. But they wrote the entire time. Uh, I never had an issue with people refusing to do work. They were engaged, or at least completed the activity for the uh, entire time uh, that I gave for it, and so had a bit of success there because I could have had students flat out refuse, and I think by mixing it up, that helps. And that rubric structure and modeling are key. Seen by the first prompt, didn't really have a pre-write or anything, and it all kind of went to heck. Uh, but the second one, by having a pre-write, uh, kind of modeling what you need, I think that it really helps uh, their writing. So that's student growth, uh, and what I think uh, helped them improve a bit.